I'm Justin Shaw, man. I was born um, in Fort City, Arkansas, uh, to Lynn John Shaw. From Fort City, Arkansas, I can't remember nothing else but moving to St. Louis, being raised here in St. In St. Louis. Uh, left St. Louis, man, moved to a little town called Ash Flat, Arkansas. Uh, my grandfather had a real uh, nice-sized church down there. And, uh, his apostle started 14 churches all over the country, so we was pretty much following him around to all of his different establishments. And then uh, in 1990, we left uh, Ash Flat, Arkansas, and moved to Augusta. I stayed there, for Augusta, Arkansas. I stayed there for four years. I went to school there. Uh, then we moved back to St. Louis, where all our family was. So I got married in uh, 2002, and I left uh, St. Louis and moved to Virginia Beach, Virginia. I stayed there for five years. Then I moved back to Arkansas, where I'm actually at now in Searcy, Arkansas. My beginning in music, man, I started in the church, started in my grandfather's church, like I said previously, man. He started 14 churches all over the country, and I was pretty much the drummer. I started off as a drummer in the church. Uh, I was singing since I can remember. You know, me, my mom, and my sister, we had, you know, we sung together. So we were the praise team. I was the drummer, they were the praise team. We didn't have any, any keyboard player at that time, so it was just me on the drums with the microphone and us singing together. Uh, all I can remember is wanting to play the keyboard because we didn't have no music. And so uh, I think when I thir turned 13, I started picking around on the keyboard. The only key I could ever play in was C, just on the little white key, just tapping around. And I tried to make everybody transpose their song to C. It didn't matter what it was. You're going to sing and see it. If you sung Amazing Grace, you're going to sing it and see it. If you sing, uh, if you sing Glory, Glory, Hallelujah, you're going to sing it and see it. If we sung whatever, it was in C. And I didn't even play the chords right. I just made up chords, and this was how this is how the chords was gonna go. And I pretty much gave them a chord structure. But uh, after a while, I started. I went to uh, Faith United, uh, where you know my cousin Liddell played at. And uh, this ain't no shot at you, cuz, but cuz they wanna teach me anything. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if he wanna thought I was gonna take his job or something like that. But he didn't wanna teach me anything, so I developed the ear for music to to play. Uh, I was writing songs, man, at, at a young age. Uh, I, I wanted to do R&B music so bad, man, and that's that's all I really wanted to do was R&B. I said, man, gospel, I know I go to church and everything, but I'm gonna sing R&B music. That's that's pretty much what, that's my style. And so, my grandmother used to tell me all the time, she called me, she used to call me on the phone, she said, baby, I heard those songs you sang, and that, 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 that ain't what it's supposed to be, baby. Uh, God made your voice for the church. It don't matter what you do, it ain't gonna work until you put God first. And so I ended up writing a song about that. Now every word in that song is actually the truth because that's exactly what she used to tell me. She said, your voice is made for the church and not for the world. So I felt like she was condemning my music. So that was a big struggle with me trying to sing gospel music and sing R&B music. So what I done was, God convicted me about the music. So I, I, I make my music to, I can't really say cater to that sound or to that feel. I can't really say, you know, to cater to that audience or to that feel, but at the same time, I, that was the struggle that I had. So that's why now it's more of a, when you listen to my music, you can hear the R&B roots in the music. If I just believe it's true, you never would have got the friend I found every time. Shaw Boy Entertainment could last. First of all, Shaw Boy had got, I, I, I told y'all I'm transparent, so uh, Shaw Boy got ganked. I ain't gonna say no names, but I got ganked out of a large sum of money. And uh, I ended up, <laughs> end up meeting up with a guy that I met. Cause like I said, I, I lived in St. Louis, man, pretty much the majority of my life. But uh, I met up with a guy, I met up with Sid, man. He was actually a Me Too music artist. And uh, we did a little engagement together out in Iowa. And uh, once we got back from Iowa, man, I heard how tight his album was. I was driving, I ended up driving everybody in the truck. And I was listening to how tight his album was, man. I'm talking, I was listening to the mixes. And uh, as I'm listening to this this this, uh, this album, uh, Singing You Out of the Four Walls, that's the name of the album. And I was, I'm listening to the album. Uh, I was just at all because I had never heard, man. The only, the only the last album that I heard that was that tight, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Me Too music artist now or with the family. I'm saying that because the album was so tight that as I go through to the next song and go to the next song, it was like you didn't want to skip these songs, man. So I was looking at my boy Renzo like, hey man, you hear that mix though? Hey bro, you hear that mix? We was looking at each other with the with the with the face. And uh 
I ended up getting with Sid and he ended up telling me that he was gonna uh, uh, link me up with uh, Levi. But once he once he gave me uh, once he called Levi, I guess it told him about me, and then he gave me Levi's number for me to call him. After I called him, it still took us for well, I want to say about a year maybe or so to work with each other. Uh, and it was all in God's time, and I understand because of what I was doing. The Bible says, "When a man's ways please God, and make even his enemies be at peace with him." So I had to do some things first. You said, "Delight yourself also in the Lord; He'll give you the desires of your heart." And because I wouldn't delight myself in God, and because I was delighting myself in drugs and indulging in all kind of other ventures, God didn't allow Levi to work with me at the time I wanted him to work with me because he still understood. And Levi is a man of faith, man. If you don't know him, you know. You possibly, I'm telling you, you know, anybody who knows him knows that he's firm in that word, man. But when I got around him, dude, I could see a lot of stuff. And I had to fake when I got around him at first. I came in the studio and I tried to, you know how we do it. We try to act holy. We try to say the right stuff because you've been in church all your life. So you know how to promote God and you know how to say this, that, and the third. But uh, when we actually got here, I mean, it, like I said, it took me a year to work with him. But when we actually came in and we started working together, I mean, it was like instant, instant, man. I mean, from the first song. It was instant, man. I mean, he even said it. We said a couple times, man. It ain't just that album ain't gonna get no better than that first song. That's that's it, man. I'm talking about, but it was instant. You don't know what the Lord has done. When you see me praising Him, just know that I praise Him. I know. My favorite song on the album, actually was a song that we recorded last, which is actually the single. That's one of my, I mean, I, it's hard for me to say my favorite song because when you hear the album, but I, I'll say it's between uh, You Don't Know, Never Knew Love, Yet Will I Trust, well, see, if I get to trying to pick songs, it's gonna be, it's, that's one of those type of things, but I say, the, I guess my favorite song was the single, You Don't Know. Because I guess because the vibe and the feeling, that was actually the last song that we had even recorded. And we was doing it, we was recording another song and Levi came across, him. I forgot how he came, pretty much came with each stuff. He was like, ooh, that'll be a whole nother song. And so that's how that pretty much came out. And then, you know, we did a whole nother song out of the, out of the, uh, out of quarter of progression, but. Before I get out of here, man, I, I definitely have to say this to my beautiful wife, baby. I love you. I appreciate you. I know we had some hard times. I know we had some struggles, baby, but I love you. I appreciate you for standing in my corner. I say this all the time. I never would have wanted to be with somebody else when I when I actually got to this point that didn't struggle with me, that didn't grind with me. And so because of the struggle we had, baby, I appreciate you even more. To my beautiful children, to Aaliyah, Justin, Tiara, Jaya, baby, I love y'all. All of that daddies, everything. I would give my life for yours. There's nothing greater to me than the joy of being you all's father so I thank you then to everybody else I want to say this man to everybody out there man my motto is this getting money is one thing but putting God first is everything oh.